Detectives is filmed on location in Podunk County. All right, right this way. Oh, over there. Oh, have a seat, oh. bag. Get off me. Okay, Ronnie, you know what you did, so why don't you just confess? Yeah, fess up. Look, I didn't do it, I swear. I know I haven't always been the most honest person, but I didn't do it. Oh yeah? Well, we have the evidence right here. Yeah, explain that one, Jurgenstein. Look, that wasn't mine, I swear. That other guy planted it on me. If I would have done it, I would have told you guys, I promise. What, you think we just go around planting evidence on people? Yeah, what are you trying to say, Officer? O'Malley is crooked. He's heavily decorated, one of the best in the county. All right, Ronnie, before we go any further, I need to look through your phone. What, don't you have to have a warrant for that? Yeah, we got a warrant, right here. Uh, come on, guys, this, there's nothing to see on there. We'll just hand it over if you got nothing to hide. Look, I got a lot of personal stuff on there that I don't really want to share with people, all right? Oh, yeah, Ronnie? Oh, 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 oh no! No! Oh, sit still. What's he got on there? Here, see for yourself. Oh, oh he's jerking his deck off. Oh, yeah. And there's also a bunch of photos of cranks. Oh. Look at the size of that one. Wow. Yeah, that's huge. Here, what about that one? Oh, wow. Oh. Well, I guess you can have this back, oh. weirdo. Pterodactyl here. And today's how-to video is going to be on this here John Deere SST-16. SST stands for Spin Steer Technology, and 16 means it's a 16 horsepower engine. Now, this one came in because it wasn't steering right. The Spin Steer Technology wasn't working. I got another name for it instead of SST. How about POCS? Piece of crap steering, that's what I call it. And the reason I call it piece of crap steering is it's over complicated. It's got all kinds of devices and actuators and all kinds of crap under there. And I never worked on one of these before. So the complaint was it would steer only one way in reverse and then you couldn't get steer at all going forward. So I tried to find out online exactly how this works but of course I found some big long mumbo jumbo over technified explanation of how it works and it's like why don't you just explain things in simple terms because not everybody's a brilliant engineer. People want to know how things work in simple terms. That's why I'm here. So I'm going to explain to you how this SST works. It's got these two actuators on here which are vacuum operated and electrically operated. And there's a rod back here. Well, here's the steering rod. And then there's a rod here for the transmission. And there's two pumps on here. There's another pulley under the gas tank and there's one here. And it's all one transmission but it's like two pumps combined. And how it works is it steers with the back wheels like a zero turn. There's nothing connected to the front wheels, nothing at all, they're just flopping around. And this rod here, which is hooked to here, which is hooked with these actuators, that's what does the driving of the wheels. So what it does is it makes one drive forward, makes one drive faster or slower than the other, and even makes one kind of go like backwards, you know, like a zero turn when you're using the sticks. But it works off of this. So I have to start it to show you. And it's gonna get loud. So 
watch over here. See how that moves? That's forward. Moving it this way. Here's reverse. Moving it the other way. The wheels are going backwards. The wheels are going frontwards. And then when you turn this, see? So the pedals and the speed of the mower, that's what helps to steer it. And then this rod, when this moves back and forth, and then you turn this, that changes like the geometry of it. So that tells the transmission how fast and how slow to go. So one wheel will spin faster and one will spin slower and that's how it steers. Because if this one's spinning faster and this one's spinning slower, that's gonna make it go this way. If this one's spinning faster and this one's spinning slower, it's going to make it go that way. And that's all controlled through this and this. Because you're changing the angle of this plate and that's going to change the speed of this. So I hope that makes sense to you. And then that's why these actuators are here. Now another thing I found out, see these little things here? These little white things on the end of these little control valves, these are little filters. And they, they will get clogged over time. So you got to keep them clean. And to do this how to video, this thing was all packed up full of crap under here. This is what I found underneath. I had to clean that out so we could see the transmission so I could show you what's going on. Now, let's get to the part where this thing wouldn't drive and what I found. There's two switches back here in the back and they're hooked to these pedals. So when you push on this, there's a lever back there that pushes on two electrical switches. And those switches are hooked to these actuators. That's what these wires are for. And that sends voltage to these, which actuates them because that's why they're called actuators and that's what helps it to steer also. So that's when I went to the back and saw this. This spring was broken on one of those little levers that push on the switch. That's why this wouldn't steer. It was only pushing on one switch and that was the one that controls it for reverse. Here's the part number. In case you need to, in case you find this broken on yours. So what I'm basically telling you in this video, this is what I found. So if you have one of these tractors and it and it'll kind of drive in reverse but not forward, this is what you want to look for. And that's in the back. Now I gotta turn the flashlight on so you can see. See back here? That's where them switches are. You gotta follow these wires. Now I zip tied it so I could get it to work so we could at least drive this thing in the shop because it was going all crazy. See? Now I don't know how hard it's gonna be to change this spring, but we're gonna find out here in a few minutes. Like I said, I never worked on one of these before. Now one other thing I wanna point out too. Mr. Cameraman, come over here. There are adjustments here for these switches. You can move these and that'll adjust those switches. I advise not messing with them. Leave them alone. But that's some kind of adjustment for them switches. And then here's your release lever, in case you don't know where that is. In case it breaks down and you need to push it, that's how you release the transmission so you can push it. There's a little sticker here. See, they got all kinds of stuff hidden a lot of people don't know. So, Mr. Cameraman, maybe you can look in the back there and you can see those switches back. Can you see them? See, here's the switches back here. 
One's for forward, one's for reverse. See how this one's spring loaded? This one's good. It's the one up here that's broke. And I just zip tied it, like I said, so we can drive it around it a little bit. So now we got to crawl under there, and take it apart, and put this spring in. Oh, and another thing. First thing you got to do is take the fenders off. So let me show you how easy that is. First thing, you're going to take four bolts out. One, two, three, four. Disconnect your seat switch. That wire comes up through here. Disconnect that. So you take those four bolts out. This knob just pops out. You just gotta grab it and pull it off. And then underneath is four more screws. One goes here, underneath, 10 millimeter. One here. And on the other side, the same thing. Two more. 10 millimeter heads. And then you got to take the pedals off. They got carriage bolts, 15 millimeter head, 15 millimeter wrench. Take the pedals off. And then you grab the seat and everything. And you just lift it all off in one piece. And then I think these are. These are either 12 or 13 millimeter. I think they're 13. These four. And that's how you get that off. So if you have one of these, periodically you may want to pull these fenders off. Maybe in the winter time when you're not using it and clean everything out from under there. All right, let's see how hard it's going to be to put this spring on. All right, I decided to get at them switches. I'm going to go ahead and pull the gas tank off. And in order to do that, uh, you're going to need some cutters. Cut these two zip ties back here, or one zip tie. Cut this zip tie off, and then 13 millimeter or half inch, I'm going to take these two bolts out, and then these two I'm just going to loosen, and then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Now this is for the deck. This is some kind of lever for the deck. You just pull that out and kick it down. And then that bracket will come off. one over here for the tank. Got to loosen it. And this should lift right out. Kind of. Oh yeah, that's right. It's also got the transmission reservoir hooked to it. Well, that's going to make a mess. Okay, you can just shove the tank off to the side, but be careful of that hose that's hooked to that trans reservoir. So you can just kick it off to the side like I got here. Now you can see this broken spring, see? And that holds tension on this, and you can see the switches better. See the switches? One here, and there's one down here. Now, you're going to need two 5 16 or two 8 millimeter wrenches. Now, I got a ratchet wrench I'm going to put on one side because it's got a through bolt and there's a head on each side. You're probably going to want to go through the top, but because of the camera can't see, I'm going to go from the bottom. If I went through the top, you wouldn't be able to see this. Whatever's easier for you. And don't lose anything. You gotta have octopus fingers. See? Octopus tentacle fingers holding that nut. Looks like there's some kind of little plastic bushing in here.
some kind of bushing or something. I hope it comes out. Yep, that comes out. All right, now this is a problem. This screw can't get it back far enough to get this little arm off to get the spring out. Otherwise, we're gonna have to take all kinds of stuff apart. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna drill a hole right here. So we can push that screw. I'm gonna make like an access hole. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to take the tire off, center punch it, and then I'm gonna drill a hole. So let me take the tire off, pull the cap off. Clip, washer. So this is getting a little more involved than we thought. But that's what happens. So that hole, that I'm going to drill. It's probably is. It looks like it's straight across from here, right in this area. Because I'm going to have to guess. We're going to drill a hole right there. Little high. I'm gonna go right below it. Start with a little bit, like a pilot hole. Oh yeah, that's good right there. So, let's see. I'll take a measurement of that so you people at home can kind of see exactly where that hole is. Let me get tape measure. Hold on. All right, three and a quarter inches from the bottom. And then it looks like it's three quarters of an inch from this slot. Three quarters of an inch, three and a quarter. All right, now let me get a bigger drill bit. Hold on. Yeah. All right, now I got a 3 8 drill bit. And a dead battery on my drill. Hold on! That battery one no better than the other one. Are we through yet? All right, let's see. Oh yeah, here comes the head of Mr. Bolt. Right there, you can see him. Wiggling out. Little Mr. Bolt head. There he is. All right, I'm gonna pull the bolt out. Now there's another one of these spacers on the other side. Can you see that? I'm gonna... All right, now here comes the lever, here comes the spring. All right, now I'm gonna shove it back in so I don't drop any of that. All right, there's broken spring. A lot of work go through for this stupid spring. Here's a new spring. All right, get the light in there. All right, I'm gonna shove this back through. Don't wanna drop nothing. Here's the springy spring. And that goes in that hole. 
Now I'm going to flip it up. All right. Let these side cutter up. I'm going to use this. All right, push that in. Now we got to get that little bushing. That little bushing in there. It looks like it is. Now here's this little bushing that was on the other side. There we go. Now the nut. All righty now. Now our two 5 16 wrenches. We try to get up in there with this one. There we go. And ratchet wrench. These rat ratchet wrenches are nice. You might want to invest in a set of them. Okay. Now bring the spring down. And underneath. Right? Nope. That little hook. It's got to go around here. Gonna need a screwdriver. Oh. I gotta get that. There. Oh. I can do it with my fingers. Come on, fingers. There we go. See? That little hook around it now. All right, now it's up in position. Woo! Okay. Now slap this back in carefully. Put it in there. Get these slots in over here. This is just a bolt here, and this bracket goes up top like this. Now, zip that all tight. Now I gotta get a zip tie, tie this back through this hole. Put this lever back up. And that little notch, put the wheel on, and then we'll test it. When you put the wheel back on, don't forget the key. You would not believe how many times people come to the shop because they replace the tire, and they go, my, something wrong with my transmission, my lawnmower won't drive. And I go, key probably fell out of the wheel. You're putting the wheel back on, the key fell out and you didn't even notice it. Then they come back and go, oh yeah, you were right, the key fell out. Yeah, gotta have the keys in the wheels. All right, we're gonna test it. Make sure this thing steers, wasn't steering when it came in. cost probably four or five dollars. I'd hate to think of what that would cost if you had to take that tractor to a dealer and have them replace that little spring back there. I know they wouldn't have drilled a hole in the side like I did. I bet you that would have cost big bucks to have that done. And as usual, there's your dinner. Alright, scumbag, oh. back to yourself. Oh. Get him out of here. Look, 
I'm innocent, I swear! You gotta believe me! Yeah, yeah, that's what they all say. O'Malley, another fine bust. I don't know how you do it. Well, let's just say I, uh, I know how to get a guy prosecuted. Good job. Great police work. Hey, uh, we're heading over to Ronnie's shed right now. You wanna ride along? Sure, I'd love to. We could take my car. The only thing we have on him right now is a dirty air filter. That's only enough evidence to hold him for 48 hours. Hopefully we'll find something more. Well, went through everything with a fine tooth comb. Couldn't find even one single piece of evidence. Yeah, turns out there wasn't that much evidence on him as we thought. This turned out to be a bust. Whoa, look at what we have here, boys. Just the evidence we've been looking for all day. <laughs> wow, how did we miss that? Good job, O'Malley. <laughs> Is this enough evidence for you? All right. Can't wait to get back to the station with this. Good job. Hey, O'Malley, where do you want me to put this evidence bag? Eh, well, yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll put it in the trunk. Huh, what's all this stuff? Hey, O'Malley, uh, what's with all these old used parts and old oil filters? Yeah, if I didn't know any better, I would think somebody was planting evidence. Look, our hands are tight as it is. It's hard to get anything to stick in this town. The laws, they're in favor of criminals. Yeah, but some of those people are innocent. Are they, Junior? We all know that nobody's reading their manuals and doing scheduled maintenance like they should. I mean, frankly, I'm sick of it. You give decent lawnmower detectives a bad name. Book him, Junior. Gladly. You're under arrest. Whoa, whoa, hey! Hands behind whoa. your back! You can't arrest me! I'm the best thing that ever happened to this police force! Well, looks like we solved the case on how O'Malley over here was able to solve all those cases. We better get down to the station and free all those people that were wrongfully accused. You know what? We could do that later. First, I want to celebrate. Let's go down to Dunkman's Donuts. Ah, oh, good idea. Are you buying? No. O'Malley's buying. <laughs> I like the way you think. Yeah. Come on, let's go.